Welcome to the Beyond Ordinary Women podcast. Every two weeks, we post podcast versions of one of our free training videos, or you can access our videos now at beyondordinarywomen.org. Enjoy the podcast. Hello, welcome to Beyond Ordinary Women Ministries. My name is Sharifa Stevens, and today we're talking with Cricket Keith about prayer. Cricket Keith is the Women's Ministry Director at First Evangelical Church in Memphis, Tennessee, where she writes and teaches the women's Bible studies. She's also an author of three books, The Gift of Rest, Sumatra with the Seven Churches, and her newly released study from Moody Press on Bended Knee. It's a book all about prayer, and that's what we're going to discuss today. So Cricket, could you talk a bit about what prayer is and what it's not? Okay. Well, thank you first for uh, having me be part of this today. I'm excited to be with you and to talk about prayer uh, because I think as women in leadership <laughs> uh, over ministries, prayer is the most important thing that we can do. It's it's where we need to begin and so that's why I'm excited about talking about it. It is so important to our ministries that we are doing. And, you know, I, the thing I challenge my women to is, are you going to be a prayer warrior? Or are you going to be a prayer sayer? And there's a difference between just saying prayers and being a prayer warrior, honestly praying. Paul Miller talks about that in his book, A Praying Life. And so... Um, my prayer for the women in my church is that we would be prayer warriors and not just say prayer, but to help us do that. I mean, we really have to understand the purpose of prayer. Why do we pray? And I have seen that there's a lot of misconceptions about the purpose of prayer. I mean, uh, there are different things I hear. Uh, some people will say, well, I pray because I'm supposed to. It, it's a duty to fulfill. My women's director expects me to pray. I'm a Christian. Mm -hmm. uh, my pastor expects me to pray. I've got to pray. And when we look at the purpose of prayer as just a ritual or an obligation we need to fulfill, a duty we need to do, then it becomes more about saying words than it is about really praying from the heart. We're just checking off. Okay, I've got to pray. Lord, be with this, these women today. Help them. Okay, done. Moving on to the next thing. That's where we're going to just, we're missing the power of prayer when that's all we do, when we look at it as fulfilling an obligation. So yeah. that's one thing uh, we don't want to do. Uh, a second uh, reason I hear that the purpose of prayer is not, but a lot of people will say, I pray because I need something. I pray because I want this to happen. And so I'm going to go to God and pray. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with going to God and asking him for things. But if that's the only purpose if that you're praying, you're missing uh, what it's really about. And right. with God as a genie or a vending machine, as opposed to the author and finisher of the universe. Yes, exactly. I'm glad you mentioned that about a genie. It's not like you go and you, you, you know, rub this magic <laughs> genie and you're going to do what you want. That's not what prayer is about. Yes, we go, but that's not the purpose. So what is the purpose of prayer? And this is where I think this is what determines whether we're going to be a prayer warrior or a prayer sayer. And that is the purpose of prayer is to really get to know more of God. It's not to get something from God. It's to get to know more of God as we spend time with him talking. And that's where we begin to, uh, you know, share with him how we're feeling. I mean, let's just say, Sharifa, I go to, I ask you to meet me at lunch at Panera's. And you're there and I come running in and I'm like, hey, Sharifa, sorry I'm late. I've just got a lot on my plate. And listen, hey, you didn't get back to me on this. I was asking you to do this and you didn't handle this. Or, hey, you know what? I got another need. Do you think you could get this done by tomorrow? This is really important. And oh, you know what? I am so sorry. I got another appointment. I got to go. It was great talking to you, Sharifa. How would you feel? 
I would feel like you really didn't care about anything that was going on with me, what I had to say, what I was feeling and how I wanted to relate to what you said. Right. And I didn't ask any input from you. I mean, there was no two-way conversation. And so I was kind of looking at that time with you as just to say, hey, you didn't do this for me. I need you to do this for me. Oh, and I got to rush off to the next thing. There was no listening to you. Uh, hearing your input about something that I'm praying, you know, Lord, I don't know what to do about this. So that's, that's a lot of just the, the purpose of prayer is just wanting to get to know more of God, getting to know him. And when you do, you see your prayers change and you see your life change as you begin to trust him more in those situations that you don't understand. And so that would be, I think we really have to understand the purpose of prayer. If we're going to be done, you know, prayer warriors and not just saying prayers, understand that we really are going to him in prayer because we want to get to know more of him and we need him. So that that's what I would say about the purpose of prayer. I really appreciate that um, distinction that you make between prayer warriors and prayer sayers. And um, what you lift up about the conversation being the purpose of prayer, there's this relationship and uh, listening as well as speaking that's involved in prayer. What would you say to people who are intimidated by the thought of having a conversation or a relationship through prayer with this vast God whom we live, move, have our being. I mean, uh, it's one thing for me to be meeting you in Panera. Yeah. It's, it's, it's something completely vastly different to, be in, to even be able to be in conversation with the God of the universe. Can you speak to the person who is finding themselves intimidated by that? Yeah. And it's easy to be intimidated by it. why would God, who is this great, awesome God over all the universe, why would he want to take time to meet with me? But what I would encourage women and what I tell my women is that he wants to meet with us. I mean, we have a personal relationship with him and, and it's hard. I, I always go back to Moses in Exodus as he would go to the tent of meeting and I love the phrase where it says that he would meet with God as a friend face to face. So sometimes I will just picture uh, sitting and actually I can't see God when I'm trying to picture it, but I'm picturing just sitting there talking and, and pouring out my heart, but it just not getting intimidated by the fact of who he is, but being encouraged by the fact that he wants to get to know you. He wants to hear from you and he's waiting for you. I mean, I believe that God delights when we come to him to meet with him and not just come to him and dump out our grocery list, but to go and say, God, I love you. Oh, Father, thank you for doing this. And so, yes, it's intimidating, but don't let that intimidate you Think of it as he is inviting you to come into his throne room and spend time with him. And then it becomes just a special relationship. And again, it's, it's about the relationship, not a ritual. It's about the relationship with him, even though it's hard to fathom because of who he is. But that's what gives us that, that special just sense of intimacy with him when we realize the king of the universe wants to meet with me. He wants to encourage me. He wants to hear from me. And so that's just don't get bogged down in who, I mean, yes, you want to focus on who he is, but just focus on the fact, God, thank you for inviting me to be part of this with you. That's really good. I think that is a beautiful place to end, a beautiful note to end on, the open invitation yeah. of the God of the universe for each one of us in prayer. Thank you so much, Cricket. This is not the end of our conversation. 
This video is the first of three videos. And so I invite everyone um, to return and to listen to the whole series with us. I also want to say again, Cricket has written a book on this very theme called On Bended Knee, and it's available through Moody Press. Again, I'm Sharifa Stevens with Beyond Ordinary Women Ministries. God bless you. Come back soon. Thanks for listening to the Beyond Ordinary Women podcast. You can find more podcast episodes and resources for women in leadership by going to beyondordinarywomen.org. This podcast is produced by Beyond Ordinary Women Ministry. Our production team includes Evelyn Babcock, Kay Daigle, Deborah Herring, and Sharifa Stevens. Theme music, Back in Stride by Don Miller, used courtesy of Christine Miller. <laughs>